So we always say follow the money. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you look at big money, what are they doing? So institutions are very involved with Bitcoin at this point. Yep. And then even some of our favorite investors like like Warren Buffett, somebody that used to bash cryptocurrency back in the day mm -hmm. is now clearly a believer. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode nine of Rookie Mondays. Mm -hmm. Today we will tackle the age-old debate: <laughs> Bitcoin versus Ethereum. Yep. Man, this is such a like debated topic. I'm excited to get into it. Mm -hmm. But before we start, we have to tell the people what Bitcoin is and what Ethereum is, because this mm -hmm. is Rookie Mondays. Yep. And we are your financial tutors. Mm -hmm. So let's kick it off with Bitcoin, bro. Like, explain to the people exactly what Bitcoin is. Got you. All right. So Bitcoin. This was the first ever cryptocurrency, right? It was actually brought up in 2009 by this person or unknown person called Satoshi Nakamoto. The reason why Satoshi Nakamoto brought it up was because he wanted to, or whoever this person is, wanted to actually get rid of the current financial system as we know it. Mm -hmm. So right now there's a middleman, right? What Satoshi Nakamoto wanted was to get rid of that middleman, and which is why he created Bitcoin as a digital currency. Mm -hmm. Now when you think about it, there are 21 million Bitcoins that could ever be mined. All right, so there's a limited supply. That sounds pretty similar to gold, yeah. which is a limited supply. Now, a lot of people, that's why I say Bitcoin is essentially digital gold. So it's a hedge against inflation. Yeah. All right, that's the best part about Bitcoin as if you hold a piece of it right now, you own something that a lot of people actually value. So that's why you see the price going up like crazy because when people end up running to it and buying it, it increases the price. Yeah, and it's crazy because like, 90% of them are already in circulation. So yep. there's only 10% left. Mm -hmm. So people have to realize that like your, your time is running out. Not saying you're too late. You should yeah. definitely get in. But time is ticking. Exactly. So that explains the actual concept behind Bitcoin, right? Now let's talk about, I guess, is Bitcoin legit? Because I know a lot of people think about as Bitcoin like, yo, I don't know if it's legit or not. Well, it actually is pretty legit based on what we're about to get into right now. So let's just talk about it. Yeah, for sure. So we always say follow the money. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you look at big money, what are they doing? So institutions are very involved with Bitcoin at this point. Yep. And then even some of our favorite investors like like Warren Buffett, somebody that used to bash cryptocurrency back in the day mm -hmm. is now clearly a believer because what Warren Buffett did recently was he took over a billion dollars out of Visa, mm -hmm. over a billion dollars out of MasterCard, yep. and put over a billion dollars into NeoBank, which is a Bitcoin-friendly bank. That's a huge statement, right? Because you know he's one of the best investors. He's one of the safest investors of yep. our time period. So the fact that he's doing this, it just shows that Bitcoin is a very legit source of income, honestly, that people can make if they invest in it, obviously. Yeah. But he's not the only one, bro. You got athletes getting involved, too. Yeah, athletes getting involved, like Clay Thompson, mm -hmm. Andre, Andre Godala, yep. OBJ. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite athletes have decided to take some of their salaries in Bitcoin. Yep. Like, Bitcoin. Like, that's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. That shows that they see it as a legitimate currency for the future. Exactly. Not only that, you got governors of, what, New York and Florida that are taking either part of their salary or their whole salary in Bitcoin. Yeah, so that yeah. speaks very highly as to where this could potentially go, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you could think about countries, you know, mm -hmm. like, like El Salvador, for example, said that they're making Bitcoin their legal tender. Yep. They're the first ones to do it, but they're definitely not gonna be the last. Mm -hmm. And then more recently, you see what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. Yep. We've been sending support to Ukraine by sending payments in Bitcoin mm -hmm. and other cryptos too, but Bitcoin is easily the most popular one being sent over to help out people in Ukraine. Yeah, and honestly, like the reason why we're trying to let you know about all these different facts is because we want to make sure you understand like this is not a scam anymore, right? I know a lot of people think it is, a lot of people thought previously, like in 09 it was, but this is, I'm not going to say it's old, but I'm also not going to say it's like super new because people are getting involved with it. And if you get involved early, you get to capitalize on it, right? That's the biggest piece about Bitcoin that you have to understand. Yeah. So now you have understanding of Bitcoin, <laughs> let's explain the second largest cryptocurrency in terms of market cap, which is Ethereum. So I'll put people onto Ethereum. Yeah, so Ethereum is a programmable blockchain mm -hmm. used to create and share businesses. Yep. What do we mean by that? The easiest way is to picture an analogy. Mm -hmm. So I like to uh, use Apple and their app store as the analogy. So look, picture this. You know how Apple's App Store is like a platform mm -hmm. where you can have a business and you make an app and you place it on Apple's App Store. Yep. It's the same way that Ethereum works. Ethereum is a network. So they provide a platform mm -hmm. for developers to when they make their coins, they put it on Ethereum's network. Yep. And so that's all it is. It's a place for 
um, coins to exist. Mm -hmm. So you low-key need Ethereum's blockchain in order for a lot of the famous cryptos that we know to exist. Like, think about Shiba Inu. Yep. Shiba had a, a crazy frenzy at one point. Everybody knows about Shiba. Mm -hmm. Yo, Shiba exists on Ethereum's blockchain, their database. Right. So when I think about Ethereum, which is why I'm a huge fan of it, honestly, is because I think the technology is absolutely amazing. It, the use case behind crypto is what makes it important, right? So in this case, Ethereum has a great use case because it provides other platforms that exist on it. Yeah. That's, that's the beauty behind Ethereum. And the crazy part is, which a lot of people get confused, is that people think Ethereum is a currency. Ethereum is not a currency, right? No, no, no. ETH is the currency. Mm -hmm. ETH. All right, so we know Bitcoin is a currency. ETH is a currency, yep. but Ethereum is a whole platform. It's so much deeper than that. Exactly. So that essentially summarizes what Bitcoin is, what Ethereum is, and their use cases behind them because they're very different, right? So before we get into how they even come into circulation and what that whole process looks like, what we need you to do is like, comment, and subscribe to this video, and please hit that little notification bell so you know we drop videos because how many videos do we drop a week? two videos a week exactly and you do not want to miss them all right but let's continue right now and talk about what the process is behind actually getting crypto into the space yeah yeah and that process is called mining i mm -hmm. know you might have heard people saying i'm a bitcoin miner what they mean is they're verifying transactions on that blockchain yep and the reward for that is they receive that coin as a reward exactly and there's a bunch of methods you could use for mining mm -hmm. but the two most popular ones are proof of stake and proof of work Currently right now, Bitcoin and Ethereum use proof of work. Now, the thing you have to understand about proof of work, as you said, right, it's really a process that's used to validate and verify the different transactions on the blockchain. But proof of work is different because it really works as a competition. Yeah. So as you said earlier, it's all about computers, right? Like there's not an actual human that's going in and doing all these different <laughs> verifications. Like that's extremely yeah, hard. Yeah, we should make that clear, right? Mining is all about computers, guys. Facts. It's not people physically mining. Remember, this is digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's very important to know. Yes. So now the competition kicks in because if you have the best computer, the best technology, you will be able to use that technology to validate and verify all the transactions on the actual network, in this case, Bitcoin's network, to get the right answer, right? You're like, okay, bet, I solved it. Now you get rewarded that Bitcoin, which is what, 6.25 Bitcoins right now? Yep, currently 6.25. Exactly, so for an example, if Terrell has the best computer, the best technology, you will always win that competition more than I will, right? Yeah, and definitely. you'll get rewarded everything more than me. Yep. That's why people don't like proof of work as much because it's very expensive. If you have to buy the best technology, pay for the electric bill, it gets expensive, right? So as you see on the screen right now, in 09, this is what it looked like to just get one Bitcoin. Now, look at the picture to the right, that's what it looks like in 2021 to get a Bitcoin, to do the whole mining process. Why? Because it's very intensive. More people started knowing about Bitcoin. More people started mining Bitcoin. The technology got harder and harder, more transactions started occurring, and that's why it looks like what it does today. Yeah, for real, there's so many transactions that are on that blockchain. Exactly. So, yeah, you need bigger, better technology, bigger data mm -hmm. to even mine. Exactly. Right? Now, there's a difference between proof of work and proof of stake. So let's tackle that. Yeah, so proof of stake, you have to now, what proof of stake is, is how you mine, right? We said yep. this is a process of mining. Now, this is when you want to hold your coins as collateral mm -hmm. in order to mine. So it's no longer where it's a competition. Yep. This is where the network chooses you. Mm -hmm. right? So how does the network know who to choose to mine these uh, coins or yep. to, to you know validate these transactions? Mm -hmm. The network chooses the person, usually, who has the most coins. Yep. There are also some networks that are proof of stake mm -hmm. that chooses the person who's held the coins the longest. Yep. And there's also some networks that are proof of stake that choose a combination of the two. Yeah, there's like three different methods you can really choose from. Exactly. You know, so for example, if I had Cardano, mm -hmm. what I would do is I would stake my coins. Let's say, because Cardano is proof of stake. So I will hold, say, say 50 Cardano up for collateral. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to now verify transactions on the blockchain. My computer is. If I try to hack it or I try to do something faulty, I actually lose all 50 of my Cardano coins. Yeah. So that's how they prevent hacking from people who are mining. Yeah, because if you think about it, right, like if you're actually staking your coins, mm -hmm. you do not want that network to get hacked because then you lose everything, mm -hmm. right? And what proof of stake actually does is it pushes up the price because if you think about it, if you have 50 of whatever currency you're using, right, and you're going to be selected to be the miner, yo, I want to win, so I'm going to try to be more than 50. I'm going to try to get 51. 
right? Yeah. And now that is increasing the price of whatever network network we're a part of. Yeah. That's why people love proof of stake. And actually, Ethereum is set to become proof of stake in the summer of this year. Yeah, so I think that'll severely push up the price of Ethereum mm -hmm. when they go proof of stake. I summer. think so too. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I'm, actually, I'm pretty excited for that. That's why you see a lot of people buying Ethereum right now, honestly. So, sure. but I think it's time for you guys to get the truth from us. What? Bitcoin we like better do we like bitcoin better or do we like ethereum better and which one do we think will go to the moon yeah. so let's just talk about that bro let's get it yeah so me personally i like bitcoin better mm -hmm. because bitcoin to me as we said is digital gold why does gold have value because we said it has value pretty much also there's a limited supply obviously mm -hmm. same thing with bitcoin there will only be 21 million that will ever be mined. It's set in the code. They're yeah. not making more than that. Right. 90% of them have already been in circulation. Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin to me is like, if we said it's digital gold, we're going to hold it the same way we hold gold. Mm -hmm. How long has gold had value for? Over 5,000 years. That's a fact. That's a fact. If we call Bitcoin the digital version of that, mm -hmm. I'm going to be with, I'm going to rock with Bitcoin all day. Ain't no competition. We don't call any other coin digital gold besides bitcoin that's true and the thing is like with bitcoin and i don't think there's a wrong answer per se right because i'm a believer in bitcoin myself mm -hmm. i know both of us say bitcoin is going to be the coin that's going to come out on top every single time however when you look at the use case behind it i think ethereum's use case is that much better because of technology i think technology will always be the number one thing out there right so the fact that other coins rely on ethereum's blockchain and the technology that it provides I think the use case is that much better. Of course, there's competition because with technology, it opens the door for competition. Yeah. Bitcoin has no competition. That's why we think it's going to be number one no matter what. But Ethereum has a great case for it. Yeah, and, and that's why we love both. You mm -hmm. know, But to me, I'm, I don't feel as safe in my Ethereum investment as I do in my Bitcoin. Just because when there's competition, you're susceptible to being overtaken. That's so true. you can look at like Avalanche or, or Cardano or mm -hmm. Solana. These are all competitors to Ethereum. They're trying to be the platform that businesses build on. Yep. And so how do we know one day there might not be a blockchain that's better than Ethereum's blockchain to overtake them? Mm -hmm. And listen, Ethereum has a great lead right now. Let's, yep. you know, let's make that clear. That's mm -hmm. why we invest in, in both. But I like the fact that Bitcoin has no competition. That's fair. No, nah, it's definitely true. Like It has two different sides to it. And we both agree that Bitcoin will be the number one, right? There's no doubt in that. But for you guys right now... If you're looking to invest in crypto, we always say you can never go wrong with the top two, as you always like to say, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, you're doing a great job. Yeah. The purpose of today's video was to make sure you understand Bitcoin, you understand Ethereum. Now you know where we stand on both. You understand proof of stake and you understand proof of work. So hopefully this all makes sense. Now, next week, we're going to actually be tackling other things that are not named Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? Because everyone wants to know the next coin to get into. Yeah. So we're going to be tackling that next week on Rookie Mondays. But if you're still watching, we appreciate you a lot. Thank you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the video. Also, hit that little notification bell because we drop two videos a week exactly and i want to make it clear next week i want you guys to please be here so please subscribe because we are going to talk about coins that will be going to the moon in the future mm -hmm. so you don't want to miss out on that that's a fact all right so we're gonna catch you guys on wednesday for a regular video but stay tuned and we're gonna see you later peace peace